Hello there and welcome to the series of videos going through the content of A-level maths. Here we're looking at cumulative binomial probability so we can answer questions from exercise 6c. Now, so you've seen the word cumulative before, you've seen it in cumulative frequency diagrams where you add up the frequencies as you go along. Cumulative binomial probability is adding up all the probabilities as you go along. So effectively what you're working out when you're working out a cumulative probability is the probability of that number of successes or fewer than that number of successes. So if you're, if you're flipping a coin 10 times and you want the cumulative probability of five successes, what you want, what you actually want there is the probability of zero successes, add one success, add two successes, add three successes, add four successes, add five successes. So adding up all of those probabilities um, with that, that number or fewer successes on the trials there. So this is what we're going to be looking at today then. We're going to be looking at the difference between just a normal probability distribution and a cumulative probability distribution and when we need to use each of the different methods um, on our calculators. So a probability distribution is what we've seen before and it allows us to calculate the exact probability of a certain number of successes. And the cumulative distribution allows us to calculate the probability of the number of successes up to and including, because you will have added up all the probabilities up until that number of successes. Now if we take, for example, the binomial probability distribution with 10 trials and 0.2 as the probability of success, uh, we get a graph that looks like this. So we've got 10 in total, 10, uh, 0 successes, 1 success, 2 success, etc. And on the bar here is the probability that we're going to get that many successes. So the probability of getting 0 successes is a bit higher than 0.1. Uh, the probability of getting 1 success out of 10 is 0.27-ish, and you'd expect it to be slightly leftward skew because we have a lower probability here. If we had a 0.8 probability, we'd expect the exact mirror image of it. Now, what does the cumulative distribution look like? It looks like this. Now, why does it look like this? The reason it looks like this is because we've added up all the different probabilities as we've gone along. Now, first of all, note the different scales on the left. So we can't compare the scales really. But for the first bar here, these two here will be the same size because the probability of having zero successes uh, or fewer is going to be the same as having zero successes. Now this bar here, the probability, the cumulative probability distribution of the value one here is going to be the probability of having one success or fewer. So you would effectively add these two bars together to get the combination of this bar here. A little bit less than 0 0.39, so that's 0 0.11 adds 0 0.27. Yeah, it's about 0 0.38, 0 0.39, isn't it? For the line that's 2 here, for the bar that has two successes or fewer, you're effectively adding up these three bars here. So we get about 0.7-ish, 0.68-ish. And then as we carry along, because no more probability is really being added on when we get to the lower numbers here, the bar doesn't change. And effectively, what you're looking at at this bar here is the probability of nine successes or fewer. So you would effectively add up all of these probabilities together. So cumulative probability adds up all of the probabilities fewer than it, okay? And as we change our probability distribution uh, on the probability part of success, then the skew will change a little bit like that. So as the probability <coughs> uh, increases, we're going to get a more rightward skewing. And as it's equal to 0 0.5, we're going to get a perfectly symmetric type of probability distribution here. And the cumulative distribution uh, pro probability distribution is always going to be upwards, a bit like your cumulative frequency diagram. That always goes upwards because you're effectively adding on uh, the next part, the next bar, as you go along. The difference between this bar here to this bar here will be exactly the fifth bar height um, or the fifth probability because you're now 
going from four or fewer probability to five or fewer probability. Okay, so hopefully that made sense then. So probability distribution works out the probability of an exact number of successes and the probability, cumulative probability distribution works out that number of successes or fewer. Okay, so what we can do now is we can use our calculator and this cumulative distribution, cumulative, um, yeah, probability distribution function to help answer some questions here. Now the first one, this is working out the probability of exactly five successes. We've got 12 trials, probability of success is a quarter. This would be a probability distribution type question. But when we're looking at a question where we want five or fewer successes, we use the cumulative distribution function. So when you get your calculator, go to probability distributions. For the first one here, we want binomial PD, because PD works out exactly equal to that number of successes. Hit variable, plug all your inputs in. The first one is the number of this many successes. 12 is how many trials. 0.25 is your probability. And you get your answer of 0.103. So 0 0.1032 to 4 decimal places there. Now if we want to work out the probability of 5 or fewer successes, then instead of going to the PD function when you hit, um, when you hit the number 7 on the main menu, you go down one and you hit binomial CD. Now this is going to add up all of the probabilities up to 5, um, or all of the number of successes up to 5. So hit variable again, and you've got to type in the same information, but notice here on your calculator, you're going to have a CD appear there rather than a PD. Okay, so this many, this uh, five here is the probability up to and including this number of successes. Um, the number of trials is N, and the probability of each success is 0 0.25, and we get 0 0.94. Five, six. So 0.9456 goes there. Okay, so the cumulative distribution function, the cumulative probability distribution function is really good if we want to work out a number of successes or fewer, but how do we switch it round and work out a number of successes or more like we've got here? We want to work out in part C the number, the probability of hitting five successes or more. Now the way that I think about this is I'll write out all the numbers from 1 to 12, or 0 to 12 really, because you've either got 0 successes, 1 success, up to a maximum of 12 successes, and you want the probability of 5 successes or more. It could be 6 successes, 7 successes, 11 successes, 12 successes, etc. But the part that you don't want out of this is 4 or fewer. You effectively don't want the probability of four or fewer successes, you want the reverse or the inverse of the probability of four successes. So we're going to do one minus the probability of four successes or fewer. So the reason we've switched the problem over to doing one minus the probability of fewer than four successes is because that's all the calculator is set up to do for us. It's only set up to work out uh, in the CD mode the number of successes or fewer, so whenever we have to work out a probability of something or more, we have to flip it round and work out the probability of one less than it being successful up to that amount and then doing one minus it. So hit your cumulative distribution function on this binomial CD, type in all your values and you get 0.8424 And there you would get um, uh, 0.1574. Okay. Now for uh, for this one here, if we want the probability of uh, the number of successes that's three or more than it, or equal to it, but less than nine, so not including that nine value. So let's think what values we're looking for there. So it's eight. To three, effectively, we want the number of successes to be in between three and eight, not nine, because it doesn't include nine in our uh, inequality there. 
So what we're going to do here is we're going to look at using the CD mode that works out the probability up to that value. Um, so if we were to plug in P uh, is less than or equal to 8, would it work out all of this probability downwards, including the 0, 1 and 2 here? So we'll have to then take away the probability of less than or equal to 2 after that. So the way we work this out is by doing the probability or the cumulative probability up to and including 8. So that's all of the values up to and including 8. But then we want to take away the probability um, less than or equal to 2. So the probability up to 2. Okay, and that will leave us with 3 down to 8. So get your calculator out. CD mode for your binomial here. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to cheekily use the list button here. Now I want the probability to come out with a 2 and an 8 so I can work out my CD values and take one away from each other. Uh, N is 12, prob probability is 0 0.25 and here's what I get. I get a probability for 2 of 0 0.3906 and a probability for 8 up to and including 8 of 0 0.9996. So do one take away the other, and you get 0 0.6090. Okay. So that would be the probability of getting a number of successes in between 3 and 8 uh, out of this binomial model. All right, then, so your turn to have a go at these questions here. Get your calculator at the ready and try and let it do all of the work for you. Right, pause the video and give it a go. Right then, well done for having a go at this question here then. So what do we have? We have a random variable x that's binomially distributed with 20 number of trials with a probability of success of 0.35. And the first question here is to find the probability of 10 or fewer successes, which is really easy on the calculator. It's just in the binomial CD mode because it's less than or equal to 10. That makes it really easy um, because CD is working out the probability up until that certain value, so it's the probability up until including 10 successes out of 20, probability 0 0.35, and we get 0 0.9468. And what's really important to uh, make sure that you're doing correctly here is that you've got the binomial in the CD mode rather than in the PD mode, which would just work out the probability of equal to 10 successes. For the second question here, we want the probability of more than 6, but not including 6. So this is effectively more than or equal to 7. Now, if we were to line up all the number of successes that we could possibly get down the bottom, and the reason we're doing this is because if the calculator can't work out 7 successes or more. Cumulative probability only works out a number of successes or fewer so we have to do a little bit of extra work here when we're working out more than that number of successes now if we want seven successes or more then this is the area of the the effective graph if we were to have the graph above it that we want um, seven successes or more what we don't want here is this section here we don't want six successes or fewer so what we'll do here is 1 minus the probability of x is less than or equal to 6. And when it's less than or equal to a certain value, we can use our binomial CD mode to help us work that out. And in this case here, it's going to be 0 0.4166. So when we do 0, 1 minus 0 0.4166, we're going to get 0 0.5834. Okay. Uh, part C here is the probability of exactly equal to five successes. Well, when you're equal to that number of successes, you use the binomial PD mode. So you do five out of 20, 0 0.35, and you get 0 0.1272. So just remember, PD is equal to, CD is less than or equal to. And for this question here, we want the number of successes in between 2 and 7. Well, that's in between this value here and this value here. So what we're going to want to do is the probability of 7 or fewer, but that will have to overlap with the 0 and the 1. So then we'll have to take away the 0 and the 1. So this here is going to equal the probability of 
x is less than or equal to 7 minus the probability of x is less than or equal to 1. So take that away. So we're just left with in between 2 and 7. Now what I'm going to do here is a binomial CD list option, which gives us the probability of 1 and 7 with 20 and 0.35 as my variables. And I'm going to get here 0 0.601 subtract 0 0.0021. So what we would get here then when we do one subtract the other is 0 0.5989. <clears throat> okay, so there we are. That's your answer for question two then. Uh, let's move on to question seven now. And a little bit more challenging, this question seven here. I'm definitely going to use the list function here. Um, let's have a look. So the va random variable x, binomial distribution, 50 trials, 0.4 um, as your probability of success finds the largest value of k such that the probability of less than or equal to that value of k is less than 0.05. So what I'm going to do in my calculator mode here, I'm going to use CD mode because it's less than or equal to a certain value um, of less than 0.55. So I'm going to use the list button and I'm just going to type in a bunch of, um, a bunch of numbers here um, that will um, that, that I approximate will have a cumulative probability of less than 0.05. So when I substitute in my values, 13 here, when you add up all of the probabilities up to and including 13 successes, you get 0.0279. 14 has gone a little bit too far here. When you add up all the probability of successes up to and including 14, you get 0 0.0539 here, so k is going to be um, 13. When you find the probability of less than or equal to 13, you get 0 0.0279. And this list mode is quite handy because it gives you a lot of the probabilities in one easy to manage screen. Okay, so the next part of our question here is to look at the smallest number r such that the probability of greater than r is 0 0.01. So what we're effectively doing here is um, when we use our CD mode, um, let's imagine we've got 0, 1, 2, 3 successes we're working with here, r successes, dot, 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 49, 50. If we want more than r, so that's the next number on from r, what we effectively want then is the probability of 1 minus the probability of x is less than or equal to r um, to be less than or equal to 0 0.01. So effectively what we want here is the probability of less than or equal to r to be more than or equal to 0 0.99. Okay, so we want quite a high probability on this, so we need to have to use high values of um, number of successes here. Now it looks like um, 28 here is the first probability that will give me um, a probability less than or equal to r of higher than 0 0.99, which would then mean the probability of more than or equal to, more than r um, is going to be very small, 0 0.01. Okay. So hopefully that uh, last part made sense. If you need to have more practice on this, exercise 6C is your place to go. I do encourage you to have lots of practice on this exercise. It is quite new. And the difference between PD and CD is very important that you get used to that. Remember, PD is working out an exact probability. CD is working out uh, a probability of that number of successes or fewer. Okay. Thanks very much for watching and have lots of practice on exercise 6C.